Okay. Causality. The law of cause and effect. In order to, to illustrate this, first of all, we have to look at if something exists, then something must have caused it to exist or made it come into, into being. Now, there is much debate over whether or not the universe had a cause and effect. So the question is that if the universe exists, who made it? Was it made by a creator that made it? Or was it made by a random chance that it came about? That, in essence, is, is, the, is the contention and the argument between atheists and theists when it comes to the idea of, of the Big Bang Theory. Um, did, did the universe come about as a matter, as a matter of, of it always existing or matter always existing? And that through a quantum leap, which is nothing, making something, or a guided process through maybe a, a, a quantum leap, which is a black hole making something, um, is basically like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. In other words, you reach your hand into the dark hole of the hat and out pops a rabbit. <laughs> Now let's just take a look at, at the idea of the Big Bang uh, and the big explosion here. If we were to say that a grenade thrown at a bunch of paint would make a picture, then we would say that by random chance the picture came about. Okay. So we throw a, a billion grenades at a bunch of paint and we get a mess basically, or the odds are increasingly very, very high. But also we take the idea of a controlled explosion. An explosion may be random, but it has order. If you look at a mushroom cloud, you get order. The question is, is that where did the order come from? If a tree fell in the woods, did it make a sound? Well, according to everybody believing that there are sound waves, then, of course, we believe that if there was a crack or a, or a vibration, sound occurred. However, how can we know with absolute certainty that anything is absolute? Take, for example, numbers. 2 plus 2 equals 4. How do we know that? Well, it adds up. But where did the idea of it adding up come from? See, atheism believes that something came out of nothing. Theism believes that something controlled the nothing that came about. But the idea of, uh, of scientific constants and absolute truth is fuzzy. That doesn't mean that there are no absolutes, because if you look at this phrase itself, are there absolutes? Are there no absolutes? Are there absolutely no absolutes? Absolutely not. Well, then, if there's absolutely no absolutes, then there's at least one absolute. So the question here is that, are absolutes provable? You see, you can't prove beyond a shadow of a doubt anything. It's impossible to, improve, to, uh, to completely prove with absolute certainty that 2 plus 2 is 4. Because we must go on laws that we've already taken for granted that work for now although we consider them laws, just like the law of causality. The law of causality means that something must have made something happen. You can't get something from nothing. Nothing does not produce something. Nothing always produces nothing. But as far as random chance is concerned, and this is talking about Albert Einstein and, and Heisenberg. Okay, um, Heisenberg was the random chance guy, but this actually goes back to Aristotle. All of these ideas. So Basically, what we have here is theism set against atheism based on something that's unprovable either way. You can't actually prove that the Bible is absolutely correct. 
but you can't absolutely prove that it's incorrect completely. I mean, based on, on some things, you can come up with some discrepancies, I'm sure. Just like you can't prove that ch random chance made a human being pop out of space. You know, that, that we got a genetic code due to a primordial soup. It's all theoretical, and it will always be theoretical. But to persecute an atheist because he believes in random chance, and to persecute a Christian because he believes in a creator, is just a biased hatred. Either way. So, my, my whole point here is that atheism and theism is a leap of faith, whether it's a quantum leap of faith or not a quantum leap of faith. It's still all based on faith. It's based on an idea or, or, or a thought through opinion or a revelation, as it would, be say, it would be said by a theist, by the Holy Spirit of God. So we must go on what we see. Now the question is, are we going to be biased and look at the, not look at the evidence for both ends of this? Like, I look at the evidence for atheism, and I look at the evidence for theism, and, and the evidence of what, what's in the Bible, and, and, and all of this evidence, and I put it together, and I form a hypothesis, but I can never absolutely prove either one, for nothing can actually absolutely be proved through science or anything else. Science cannot know everything, because it bases everything it knows on laws that it sees, but it does not understand all laws. So... There may be absolutes, but all absolute, the idea that all absolutes are absolutely provable is absolute nonsense. So by calling people who believe in God, people who believe in Santa Claus and the spaghetti monster or whatever it is, is just a bias. But to call atheists silly because they believe in, in, in random chance is also biased. So the, the question here, are we going to get over our bias and start to look at what's there and then live and let live according to what people believe instead of calling people totally unintelligent, uninformed, because this, this is now a political thing that, that atheists do that's quite appalling. So um, beyond all, all, of, all of this, I believe in a God and I, I don't believe that the Bible is absolutely absolute although other people do, and I'm persecuted for that. There are some stories in the Bible, like the rape that happened in Judges 21. I don't think that it, it may have occurred, because I know that there's a story about the Sabine woman from Rome, and it's very like the story that's in Judges. I know that the Bible may have been handed down to Moses, but I know that it was lost. I know, I know that it wasn't until the King Josiah found it that they started following it again. And I also know that there have been insertions to, to there have been people trying to, to, to write apocryphal books and false prophets since the beginning. That doesn't mean that I discredit the total Bible, because the Bible also says that they will look upon me whom they pierced. Maybe hundreds of years before Jesus came, it was told that the Jews would not believe in a Messiah that was going to be pierced. So, the Psalms talk about a crucifixion very clearly. And here it is, the Jews reject it. See, there are certain things that are in the Bible that uh, were written that came to pass pro prophetically that make me believe that, that, that the Bible is true. Whether, whether it's true that God, that everything that was written in there doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that it was like somebody wrote in the newspaper back in the 1700s that the stock, that, that Black Friday would happen. I mean, or, or, or was it Black, what was it, the, the, the stock market crash? I call it Black Friday because of Christmas. <laughs> it was a Monday, right? I'm not sure. But anyway, basically, um, you know, if, if something that was written in a whole bunch of books that may have insertions in it or problems with it tells the future, like right on the button, then that makes me think that there's evidence for me to, have, to put credence in it. Um, and then what happens politically, and there's a lot of reasons for me to believe that what was written back there had some pertinence to what happened in the future. I, I know that a lot of people have some qualms with me for it, but it makes a lot more sense because there's a lot of objection through, by atheists 
uh, especially on some of the things that were written, such as the rape that happened in, in Judges. Now, so what I'm saying here is that that I believe in God based on, on, on logic. I also believe that God revealed himself to me through uh, uh, three pennies. Now, whether you believe that's silly or not, I can tell you the whole story, how it happened. But you see, it doesn't matter because all of everything is a leap of faith. It's a leap of faith, a religious type. Re re it's not religion. No, I'm not saying atheism is religion because there must be a God involved. But it is a religious type leap of faith. Because look how look how incredible the odds are for something coming from nothing. Just as it's a, a, a leap of faith for a Christian to believe that there's a creator that made nothing come out of something or something come out of nothing. So either way, either way, it's faith that determines everything. Now a lot of people will blindly believe in faith. I don't believe in blind faith. I believe that God does reveal things. I believe God has revealed things, but he doesn't make my faith blind. I should be able to argue on a, 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 from physics. I should be able to argue from philosophy. I should be able to, to, to have the mind to be able to defend or, or not defend what is written in the Bible, or at least def defend what I think is axiomatic or not axiomatic based on prophecy. And, and that is what I do. So I, I'm interested in your comments, but as usual, since I have a lot of people who are hateful, I will, I will leave the comments uh, up to my discretion. Uh, thank you. Have a great day.